Hit it. You're gonna need a bigger boat. We started uh, preservation and restoration on the film analog level back in the early 90s. And we've been working on it ever since. And we have uh, done either restoration or preservation of over 1,200 feature length titles. There's a selected group of titles that we're working on now that was selected by executives, film historians, that we can put away and preserve for generations to come. When restoring films today, you want to maintain the, the creative artist look. Producer, the director, the cinematographer collaborated for a look in a movie. You don't want to lose that in restoration. We're not altering the filmmaker's vision, but we are removing things that are detrimental to the experience, that may be distracting. Now, we have tools to be able to deal with that. We're in scanning right now, and this is where it all starts. We have original camera negative loaded on the scanner. The scanner basically converts each and every film frame into a digital image at three times the actual resolution of the film. Now that we're scanning off of the original negative at very, very high resolution and creating very high resolution digital images, it does things like make grain more apparent. Film grain is one of the things that make film look like it does. We certainly don't want grain to be non-existent and make everything look flat, but where it causes an objectionable or distracting uh, aspect of, of enjoying the film, we do want to manage it. And that I could shoot all the Blue Jays I wanted, but to remember, it was a sin to kill a mockingbird. Like, for example, to kill a mockingbird, and they did a lot of optical push-ins, the camera is not moving in on a character. I got something to say. It's done optically in the lab. So that grain, instead of maintaining the same size, it gets bigger because it's being blown up. And so what we do is we average the grain so it matches the scene before and after the push-in. So the grain is not huge on the push-in. It's the same as the shot before and shot after. Also, a original film element, like an original negative, can be subject to flicker. Flicker sometimes is a fluctuation where the density you know, gets darker than brighter, almost like lights being turned on and off continuously. Sometimes it's, it's due to a shutter problem in the camera, light leaking through on the film edges, and sometimes it's just because the film has gotten old and it started to deteriorate. There was a serious issue of flicker in All Quiet on the Western Front, but now there's software that can literally figure out the average of the light and dark uh, frames and, and smooth out that flicker and I'm really pleased with the results. Also, we're smoothing out splice bumps and things like that where the film jitters. And when you're constantly watching the film moving and you can't concentrate on the image, you want that to be a more stable image. What film stabilization does is it, it'll lock on to certain key points in the frame that you want to remain stable and it'll track that through motion and basically hold it still. There is one scene in Out of Africa where Robert Redford and Meryl Streep are walking across the frame and they're bobbing and weaving back and forth across the frame. So we have some pretty skilled operators who took some pinpoints, locked onto them, and tracked them 
as the camera was moving and, and did a very good job of smoothing it out. Brad, darling, I love you. I know. Color correction is one of the tools that we use to maintain the intent, the look of what the filmmaker wanted to achieve. We've had the older titles where the color has started to fade. One of our supervisors is working on a, an old Rock Hudson title called Pillow Talk, and that has severe fading, but they were able to isolate the layers that had faded and bring it back up to its original levels. There are times in the preservation process and in the restoration process where we run across a section of the original negative that may have scratches, tears. As we were working on To Kill a Mockingbird, we encountered a big tear directly over Gregory Peck. And there were several really challenging tears in Jaws. But today, we have some very powerful editing and restoration systems and quite frankly, some very, very skilled artists that are able to digitally stitch those images back together and manipulate the images so that the damage is virtually undetectable. It's really amazing stuff. Elizabeth! Audio is a big part of the restoration process. We're removing things like ticks, crackle, hum, distortion whenever possible, and um, just trying to clean up the track to bring it back to the way it's really intended to be heard. I am Dracula. There's definitely a couple of examples of where we can do some audio restoration that brings out some of the soundtrack that wasn't really heard in the past. Everything is in order, awaiting your signature. Referring to some of our earlier titles, such as Dracula, uh, where we had a lot of hiss throughout the entire feature. <coughs> and to listen to a before and after track of something like that, you can actually hear a lot of things, whether it be just bumps of the coffin or opening and closing of doors and walking up and down stairs, little things like that that you couldn't really hear with all the hiss in the original soundtrack. Listen to them. Children of the night. <laughs> I feel like uh, myself and my colleagues were almost like caretakers. Back when these pictures were shot, it was more or less a theatrical presentation. And after that run was done, put it away and forget about it. But now we are actually preserving this for the ages. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> when you come in here and you look around, the size of the library and work on these great titles. It doesn't get any better. We look at movies as a part of our heritage. We want to carry that heritage on to not only our children, but our grandchildren. And by investing in it and the restoration and the preservation of it, they're going to be able to watch 50 to 100 years from now.